it's Saturday, day two of our quarantine. It's half past ten in the morning and I am fully dressed and have makeup on. So please take a picture because you're not going to see this many times. So hopefully by day 13, the picture still looks the same. We never know. I might sit here on my PJs and have something on my head and have no makeup on. So let's, let's hope for the best. You can... Um, you can intercede and pray, and hopefully the, the image looks the same. So I hope you're doing good, and I hope you're having a wonderful Saturday. Um, you know, this is a, a really a, a good, we can make this a beautiful time of isolation, um, a time to just spend with family um, or friends or loved ones. Um, I just want to also say to people that if you're alone in this time, you're not alone. Um, we're together in this, and God is always with you. So, you know, um, one of the most encouraging and, and one of the most um, comforting words that God ever spoke to me was, I'm with you. And those words always carry me through in any circumstance. So I just want to say to you, wherever you are, whether you're alone, whether you're spending time with family, whether you're with friends, I just want to tell you that God is with you and that he's never going to leave you. So, yeah, let's just enjoy this time um, let's choose joy, let's choose life, let's just choose Jesus. So, yeah, I think it's, um, you know, it's so, it's so wonderful. 21 days is a time to actually reinforce a new habit. So we can reinforce some good habits, get, our, get something straight, just look back a bit on your life, reflect on your life and say, hey, am I actually going where I want to go? Or is there some changes that I need to make? And, you know, when we're not that busy and we don't have a thousand places to rush to, it's so good to reflect and to see, hey, am I actually en route of, of the plan that God has for my life? Am I actually going the way that, um, that I know that he's intending for me to go? Um, spend some time with him. Say, Lord, are we heading on the right route? You know, is this, is this where we're supposed to be heading? And if you need to make a few changes, what a better time to make those changes and say, hey, I'm, I'm going to let this go and I'm going to, reinforce this new habit in my life. So, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful time that we have. So um, I also want to just encourage you and ask you, if you need prayer in this time, just comment on our feed at this moment, and we're going to pray for you. Um, we're really just trusting God that this is a time of miracles, a time of revival, a time where we will seek the face of God. So please just send us your prayer requests. Um, we would love to pray for you. So, yeah, awesome. So let's jump into the Word. Um, this Last night, actually, God spoke to me, and He said to me, what we're we going to, to teach on today. And basically, we're going to speak about prayer. And, um, you know, prayer to me is, is, is something that's so beautiful, but also so, um, how can I say it? It's, it's not very, uh, there's not a lot of definitions of exactly what is prayer. And I remember when I just became a Christian, I said, you know, how do you pray? And how, what does prayer look like? And how do you speak to an invisible God? You know, so it's, and, and as, as I've grown in my relationship with God, God has been teaching me and I've been taught by some people just some things that can help us in our prayer life. So we're going to speak a bit about prayer um, you know, Ma Mary, she sat at the feet of Jesus, and Jesus said that she chose the best thing. Martha was working, and she was getting everything ready, and the word says that Martha was actually doing good things. So it's not like she was busy with stuff that she wasn't supposed to. She was busy with good things. But Jesus said that Mary chose the best thing, to just sit at the feet of Jesus, to, to look into his eyes, to adore him. You know, she gave him her full attention. And that's what prayer and relationship is all about. It's to give someone your full attention. And, um, you know, I think in this time, let's, let's make this a new habit. If you don't have that habit already, or maybe just reinforce the habit and say, hey, okay, let's just fine-tune this habit. And just to, to, to make time, set time aside and say, this is my time alone with Jesus. And whatever you need to do, um, if you have children in the house, put earplugs in, put, 
whatever you need to do to become still. Get up at three o'clock in the morning. You know, there, there's, there's nothing worth more than sitting at the feet of Jesus. So, and if you do those things, I'm telling you, God is going to bless you and reward you and he's going to make things easy for you. So it's really, there's only benefits in it for you. So um, it's for your benefit. So yeah, let's just, um, let's just enjoy this time. So, um, you know, prayer for me, if I can define it, prayer for me is fellowship. It's spending time. It's speaking to God. It's looking at him. It's spending time in the word. It's, it's, it's a time of fellowship. And, you know, it's, people can complicate it a lot. But I realized in my personal life that, that God gave me relationships. He gave me friendships. He gave me family. He gave me relationships to teach me about fellowship. So when we have a friend or when you have a, um, a, um, you are in a relationship or you have a family member, God is actually teaching you to have a relationship with him through fellowship. So, you know, that's, that's what, what's beautiful about relationship is you, you get to know someone. And initially, it might be a bit awkward. And you might be thinking, what should I say? What shouldn't I say? But the more you get to know someone and the more you trust someone, the easier fellowship is. And the more you get to know that person's heart and what makes them excited. And, and, um, and that's how it is with God. You know, so it's fellowship. It's relationship. I love the word communion um, because communion is such a, it's such an intimate, <laughs> loving word that just talks about being one with someone. And that's what's happened is God reconciled us back to him. So we are in communion with him. We are married to him. I am the bride of Christ. You are the bride of Christ. So we have perfect communion and fellowship with God. We are one with him. And that's a very intimate and a beautiful relationship where God is with you, not only in your time of prayer, but he's actually doing life with you. So you have those moments, you know, any marriage, a good, healthy marriage has different facets. So you have times where you um, just do life together. You cook and you clean and you go to work and you do all those things. But, but you're constantly in communion, even if you're not talking to each other the whole time or if you don't have constant contact. You are aware of each other. You know where, where the other one is. You know what they're up to. Um, so you have, you still have that that um, that constant communion, but then there are, there are times when you just spend time alone with um, with your partner. So there's times when when you say, okay, now we've done work, we've done cooking, we've done life, but I want you to myself now. You know, I want I want you for myself, and that's how God feels about us. He he. I love the way he, he, he feels about us. He says, I'm, a, I'm jealous for you. So he's saying, I want you to myself. I don't want to share you. I don't want to share you with a lot of distractions. I want you to myself. You know, that's the type of relationship that we have with God. So there's times in our, in our relationship with God that God is drawing us close to his heart. Where he's drawing us into the secret room, into the, into the inner in the most place of his heart and saying, here I want a fellowship. I want to have communion with you, just me and you. Um, I love what Song of Solomon 6 verse 3 says. Um, it says, I am my beloved's and he is mine. And that's the type of relationship that we have with God is I am his and he is mine. I don't have to share him. He doesn't have to share me. We belong to each other. We are in this relationship and it's that's how deep it is. That's how meaningful and how beautiful this relationship is. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's important that we know it's like any um, marriage. It's a good, healthy marriage where we have times alone, but we also do life together. And, you know, when you walk out of your prayer room, when you walk out of that place, you decide, I'm going to stay in constant communion with God. I'm going to take him to wherever I'm going. I'm going to take him to work. I'm going to take him to, to the kids. I'm going to take him to school. I'm going to take him to wherever I'm heading. And I'm just aware of him there. Even if you're sitting in front of the computer, just be aware of Jesus. Be aware that he's with you. He's sitting there next to you. And you can ask him and say, Lord, this is, 
this is difficult. Won't you give me some advice? Just help me. Um, with the kids, you know, just be aware that he's there with you. He's, he's in every part of your life. And the, the most wonderful thing is that he wants to be part of every area of your life. So I think years ago I realized I compartmentalized my relationship with God. You know, Sundays you become aware of God and, and you go to church and you worship God. And, and then Mondays you think, okay, now I have to be a grown-up. Now I have to stand on my own two feet. Now I have to be responsible. And God started speaking to me and saying, I want to be part of everything. I, I don't want you to, to take responsibility for, for doing life on your own. I'm, I'm your husband. I'm responsible for you. I want to do this with you. So that's, that's amazing is that God wants to do life with us. And um, so prayer is not just, it's not this little rhyme that you say in the morning. Um, it's fellowship. It's communion. It's doing life with God. Um, you know, about a year ago, God spoke to me, and he, he gave me two words. And at first, I was a bit like, oh, you know, maybe maybe this sounds a bit loaded. But he, he gave me two words. He said, consistency and diligence is key in your relationship with me. And I thought, yo, Lord, what do you mean? And, and he just said to me, consistently just do the same thing. Have a, a, a separated time and consistently seek me. Consistently seek my face. And do it diligently. And diligence to me um, means that you do it whether it's in good circumstances or in bad circumstances. You know, as an athlete, you know when you're training for a race, um, you have to consistently train. You have to get your body ready. So you do the same things and you slowly increase your program, but you do it consistently. And the diligence comes in that there's days where the weather is terrible. There's days where it's rainy and it's cold. There's days when you don't feel like training at all. There's days when you just want to lie in bed and put on your pajamas and, and, and be lazy and do nothing. But, you know, any athlete will tell you that key to actually performing and getting to your goal is consistency and diligence. So I want to read um, Jeremiah 29. Um, with you. So let's, let's just go to Jeremiah 29. And I want to say this, you know, if that one day you, you get up and you feel, oh no, now I'm just going to lie in bed, don't feel condemned. Um, don't think, oh no, I wasn't consistently seeking God. I missed my, I missed my appointment with him. God is so gracious and merciful. Just um, I almost want to say, put it behind you. Don't even think about it. Condemnation is not from God. So don't, don't feel condemned when you miss an appointment or, you know, when you had that lazy day. It's okay. Speak to God in your lazy day and just say, Lord, I'm so lazy and so chilled. And God's probably going to say, it, it, it's okay. Just enjoy it with me. Be lazy with me. So um, don't, don't make it another ritual. Um, it's life. It's life with him. It's not a ritual. It's not religion. It's relationship. So, you know, th the, that's the, the thing is I think sometimes we want these recipes. And um, God gives us some keys and he gives us some things to do. But it's life. It's life with him. Okay, so Jeremiah 29, you know verse 11 so well. Let's read it. It's um, God says, I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts and plans for welfare and peace and not for evil. Isn't that beautiful? God knows the plans that he has for us. We don't need to know the plan. <laughs> he knows the plan. So he's saying, you know, I know the plans that I have for you. And they're good. And they, um, they're full of peace and welfare. And they're not for your evil. To give you hope in your final outcome. Then you will call upon me. And you will come and pray to me, and I will hear and heed you. Then you will seek me. Now, the first time I read this, I said, Lord, why do we have to seek you? Are you far? Are you hiding? Why do we need to seek you? But listen what the verse says. It says, inquire for and require me and find me. You will seek me, inquire for 
and require me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. And God said to me, he said to me, Rina, this is, this seeking that I'm talking about is, is a longing with your heart toward me. It's saying, I'm see- I, I want you. I want you, Lord, with all my heart. I'm seeking after you. I'm searching after you. I want to know you. I want to spend time with you. You know, I just think if we just pursue God the way that we pursue human relationships, imagine the, the relationship that you will have with God. And that's what God is longing for. You know, he's always with us. He never leaves us. So you can go through life actually not spending that much time with him. You can go through life ignoring him. But he's with you. Um, he's always there at your side. If you believe in Jesus, then he has moved in. You're a child of God. So God says, I want you to seek me with all your heart. He's saying, I want you. I want your heart. I don't want just religion. I don't want this to be a ritual. I want you. So, you know, and 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 further the verse says, if we seek him with all our heart, we will find him. Let's just go to Hebrews 11, verse 6. We have a bit of a knock on the door. It sounds like a um, hostage situation, but we believe everything will be okay. <laughs> it's lovely to quarantine with kids. It's beautiful. We learn a lot. Hebrews 11. Thank you, Jesus. You know, this really excites me is um, is that we can have a relationship with God. Just imagine that. I mean, you can have a relationship with God. And he is your father. He's your husband. He's, he's your friend. So that is just so amazing. Let's just read Hebrews 11 verse 6. It says, but without faith, it's impossible to please and be satisfactory to him. So step number one, you need faith to have a relationship with God. There is no way that you're going to have a relationship with God if you don't believe in him. You need to give him your life. You need to say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you, and I have faith in you. Um, please come into my life. So a relationship with God is not, it doesn't happen through osmosis. <laughs> You need to have faith. The word says it's impossible for us to please God without faith. And you know, if you are watching this now and you don't know God, you don't have a relationship with him, it's so easy. Just turn to him right now, just where you are, and say, Lord Jesus, I need you. I want you in my life. I want to have a relationship with you. I want to know you. And and there you go. (laughs) And just give your heart, give your life to him. And start by looking at these messages. You know, with the internet, it's so easy these days. There's messages that you can listen to and you can, um, you can have church without even having a building like we're doing now. And then just go to the Word and say, Holy Spirit, I need you. Um, I, a few years ago, I said to God, Lord, I don't know how to have a relationship with you. There's not those many guidelines in the Bible of how to have a relationship. And, you know, I, I realized that that's also part of the relationship is the trust that he is leading me in this relationship. The Holy Spirit will guide you. So just say, Holy Spirit, I don't know how. I don't know how to have a relationship with you. But will you take my hand? Will you show me? Will you teach me? Will you guide me in this relationship? Till this day, I still do it. I say, Holy Spirit, lead me. Just reveal your, yourself to me. Show me how to have this relationship. Just Teach me who you are. I want to know you. So that's how easy it is, is God is in control. And when you give your life to him, he belongs to you and you belong to him. So, okay, let's go on. For whoever would come near to God. Oh, that is so beautiful. If you listen to Harit's message this morning, um, he spoke a lot about the same thing, is drawing near to God. For whoever would come near to God must believe that God exists. That is so amazing. So for you to draw near to God, all you have to do is to believe that he is God. And he is the only true God. 
and that he is a rewarder of those who earnestly and diligently seek him. So there's those words that I was talking about, those, that consistency and diligence. God said he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So, you know, your flesh, your soul is always going to fight with your spirit. Um, your flesh is always going to say, I'm not in the mood. It's much easier to lie on the couch and watch movies than it is to draw near to God and to say, Lord, show me yourself. It's for some other reason, our flesh loves to fight with us. So it loves to fight with the spirit. So I almost want to tell you, is you're most probably not going to be in the mood to spend time with Jesus. Most probably. If you are, that is fantastic. Run to God at that moment. But that's why I believe it's good to, to just have times of fellowship and say, Lord, I want to make an appointment with you. I want to draw near to you. And to go and do it, because I'm telling you, your flesh is going to fight with you and say, I'm not in the mood. The weather's not nice. I'm not feeling that well. I don't feel close to God. It's not about your feelings. It's about knowing him. So consistently and diligently draw near to God and just say, Lord, whether I feel like it or not, I want you and I need you. And we're going to spend time together and I'm longing after your heart. I want to know you. You know, John um, 17 verse 3, let me just make sure I have the right scripture, says, this is eternal life that we may know him, the one true God and Jesus Christ. So let's just go there. Let me make sure that I'm quoting the right, right scripture. John 17 verse 3. And this is eternal life. It means to know you, the only true and real God, and to know him, Jesus, as the Christ, the anointed whom you have sent. So, you know, we think that eternal life happens one day when you die. Not true. Eternal life starts now as we get to know God. The moment that you gave your life to God, eternal life started. You died to your old life and you became a new person in Christ. So this is where eternal life starts. It's by knowing him. So it can literally become heaven on earth. That's what Jesus prayed. He said, Lord, as it is in heaven, let it be so on earth. So, and, you know, we always say this, where is God? Um, and God is not far. God is near. He's in us. So where's heaven? It's near. It's, it's close at hand. It's wherever God is. That's heaven. So yes, there is heaven and there is that place, of course. But you can experience heaven on earth right where you are now because God is with you and he is heaven. So even in the midst of the worst circumstances, you can have heaven on earth. You know, I, um, there was a time in my life where it, it, it went a bit rough and things were just a bit, um, I was just going through a bit of a tough time. And, and I spoke to God and I said, Lord, it feels, like, it feels like I lost my destiny. It feels like my whole life is, is on a route and, and I'm so afraid that I'm going to lose you. And, you know, God spoke to me and um, I, just, we, I just opened my Bible, actually. But that's how God speaks to us. So I opened my Bible that night and I was saying, Lord, please just help me because it feels like I lost my, my goal. I lost, I lost my de destiny. And, you know, my Bible opened to Philippians 3 verse 10. I want to read this to you. It says, for my determined purpose is that I may know him. Isn't that so amazing? My determined purpose so Paul is saying, it's not just my purpose. I determine to know him. I determine to seek him out. I determine that this is my life's purpose, is to know him. That I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with, acquainted with him, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly, and that I may in the same way come to know the power outflowing from, from his resurrection. And that I may so share his sufferings as to be continually transformed into um, the spirit, into his likeness, even into his death. Even to his death. Oh, sorry, didn't read that very nicely. So Paul is saying, 
My determined purpose is that I may know him and that I may get to know him better, that I may become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him. But he's saying, I determined to do this. I determined to know him. You know, we have to determine to know him and say, Lord, I'm going to seek you with all my heart. I want to know you. Um, you know, I love Nelson Mandela. He's really one of my icons. I love him. I, 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 I watched a lot of his documentaries. I, I love to read some of his books. You know, but I know a lot about him. But I never met him. I never looked into his eyes. I never had a conversation with him personally. So I knew a lot about him, but I never knew him personally. And you know, with God, it's so important that we don't get to a place where we know a lot about him, but we don't know him personally. There's a time in your life where you have to say, okay, Lord, I know a lot about you, but I want to know you. I want to know what you look like. I want to know your voice. I want to know what makes your heart beat. I want to know you. Um, we need to know him personally for ourselves. So I, I just want to encourage you to know him personally. Make time. Set time aside. Say, Lord, I want to know you with all my heart. I, I want, I, I'm going to seek you with all I have. I'm going to pursue you. And he is so close. He's with you. And I'm telling you, he is going to blow your mind with his goodness. It's going to be so glorious. So during this time of isolation, I really want to encourage you, draw near to God. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And enjoy it. Don't feel bad when you miss an opportunity. Don't feel bad when, when you set a time aside and now you're feeling lazy. Just go then. Just after you, you, you got off the couch and you said, okay, now movie is finished, go then. Go then and say, Lord, okay, here I am. I want to spend time with you. But set, I would encourage you to set time aside and to say, I'm going to consistently and diligently seek God because there's always going to be distractions and there's always going to be opportunities to say, now isn't a good time. So let's just make a good time and say, Lord, I'm going to seek you with all my heart. I want to know you personally. I, just, I don't just want to know about you. I want to know you. So that's our um, message for, for this day, for day two. So enjoy your relationship with God. Just grab a cup of coffee with him, sit with him, and just enjoy him. Right, guys, bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.